South Korea today is one of the most highest economic countries in the world. However, many still wonder how it got here today. Originally, South Korea was a war-torn country in ruins. Koreans gave up completely, believing their country will not survive. In the UN at the time, Korea was the poorest of 102 nations. One man was able to change this. His name was Park Chung-hee. However, his life did not begin with triumph, as Korea was annexed by Japan. Park Chung-hee grew up on a poor farm in Korea, ever scored the best in his whole entire school. Korea was recently annexed by the Russo-Japanese War, showing the Russian Empire and Japanese Empire going to war, and Japan winning and annexing Korea in 1910. Many Korean patriots protested this, but Park went a completely different way and joined the Japanese military. He was forced to join due to Japanese wanting young Korean men to join the military. In doing so, Park became one of the best soldiers and was praised by his peers and was stationed at the Manchukuo Army, a puppet state assembled by the Japanese army in Manchuria. His mission was also to destroy the Korean Liberation Army, led by the famous Korean patriot Kim Gu or Kim Ko, who was famous in Korea from his works. Park became one of the largest and biggest soldiers known in the Japanese Empire. After the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Cold War erupted, joining the United States and the Soviet Union going to war with each other. The Korean War began in 1950 with North Korean forces invading South Korea. The North was led by Kim Il-sung, a guerrilla wartime leader, while the South was led by Dr. Sim Man Rhee, a Korean patriot during Japanese annexation. Park Chun hee was stationed with his best friend Kim jong Pil and later assassin. He was demoted by Sim Man Rhee to become an assistant citizen throughout the war. The war saw huge casualties, with Chinese and communist North Korea Koreans and indirectly the Soviet Union against the US, UN, and South Korea. Park Chun hee climbed the military hierarchy to become an assistant general. He was stationed at the American base in Fort Sill, where he grew his political ideologies, becoming a conservative. Later on, the war ended in 1953 with an armistice signed but not a peace treaty. South Korea was in ruins and economically struggling as well. No economic growth happened after the Korean War, and the U.S. did not help it due to them going to the Vietnam War. Communist North Korea was even excelling them in each way possible, becoming the richest in Asia. Riots and protests began, with Dr. Sim Man Rhee leaving office as well. Park Chun Hee took this to his advantage and staged a military coup upon Seoul, and was elected president for the next 16 years, beginning the miracle of the Han. The Han River began when Park Chun Hee degree assembled thousands of Korean workers to West Germany. Their paychecks alone equaled the GDP per capita. He also fixed up the Han River, which was brutally damaged by the war. He also planted many trees to prevent mudslides from killing many of the Korean citizens. He also started the New Village Act, which protected and helped many of the agricultural side of Korea. This replaced many of the backbreaking labor with machines and tech instead. Speaking of tech, he also provided many companies such as Samsung, Hyundai, and other companies in Korea like LG and others were able to provide a huge benefit from this action. This new movement that he caused was able to cause many shippings and exports upon Korea as well. Soon Korea was getting back upon its feet. Korea was no longer just a bunch of farmers, but rather a high-tech country. Korea was soon producing steel and oil. However, this was temporarily stunned due to the oil crisis in Asia, however South Korea was able to recover. The second phase was to Korea's mainland and their economic growth at a 9.6% export, which grew to an unexpected rate of 52%. Many of Korea's agricultural sites were gone, replaced with high-tech countries and shipbuilding ports. Soon Korea was producing more and more rapid materials across Asia, however there's still one problem. North Korea still terrorized them, trying to invade South Korea. Park Chun Hee was able to deal with this. Even though the Korean War ended in 1953, North Korea still sent special forces to invade and destroy South Korea. This became a huge infringement upon Koreans 
believing that South Korea will not survive as a nation. Park Chun Hee changed his mindset by hammering the message that 18 year olds must join the military or else they can face jail time. He also spent many of the budget on tanks, ships, air force, and weaponry. He also spent it on radar and missiles, artillery, and many others. He became a military authoritarian figure due to his past as a general. He became very huge upon this and started sending up many factories to build the military weapons he needed. He also created propaganda that started with anti-communism. This created many of the attitudes towards the North Koreans to this day, and communists in general. The problem worsened for South Korea when President JFK ended the relationship with Park due to his dictatorship. However, the U.S. was going through the Vietnam War. Park took to his advantage to repair the relationship. He sent the second largest amount of soldiers to Vietnam to aid the fight. He also met with many U.S. presidents as well, such as Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald R. Ford, and the last he ever met was President Jimmy Carter. This will be the last due to Park Chun Hee's assassination. He also tried to repair the relationship with Japan. However, this saw many controversies as well because of Japan's annexation of Korea that happened before. After some talks in 1965, Japan lended Korea over $1 million to aid in their funding. America also supplied them with supplies and hundreds of millions of dollars to aid them in their advance to technology. Even though this may have seen a huge historical event, Students and people were still protesting against Park's regime. Park Chun-hee is seen as a very controversial figure in the 21st century, for many people saw him as a fascist dictator. Many people accuse Park of trying to abolish human rights and go against democracy itself. Many Koreans saw him as an egotistical maniac wanting to rule South Korea with an iron fist. Korean students and Koreans protested violently. This divided Korea on the issue if Park Chun-hee was a good leader or not. In 1974, Park Chun-hee was almost assassinated while his wife was killed, fatally shot, by a North Korean sympathizer who was native-born Japanese. Later on, known as the Blue House Incident, Park Chun-hee was shot fatally in the head by his best friend Kim Jong-pil. This will leave a permanent scar on Park Chun-hee's regime. Today, Park Chun Hee is credited for making what South Korea is today. He's credited for making the companies, infrastructure, and making Korean people much more happier than they would be back then. He turned a third world country to a first world from his programming and the industrial capabilities and pursuing. He also created the Korean military to be one of the strongest militaries in the world. In his honor, a golden statue was created in front of the Park Chun Hee Museum. The statue was seen walking forward and holding a blueprint. The statue saw many uprisings, but people wanted the statue destroyed due to Park Chun Hee's dictatorship. Many people celebrated the statue, thinking it was a good improvement upon it. No matter which side you see, however, Park Chun Hee left a scarring impact upon South Korea. Overall, Park Chun-hee was one of the greatest politicians to ever live. He left a small military uprising at the time to the dominant party in South Korea. He transformed a third world country to a first world from his industries and capabilities of what he pursued. This was Park Chun-hee's moment. This was his dream. Even though there may have been tragedy, there was triumph. He named this triumph the Miracle of the Han River.